Welcome everyone. So, we have been discussing so far static teams with uh, various sorts of uh, types of information for the players. We looked at an example with uh, two players and in which both players had identical information, sometimes they had no information, sometimes they had in asymmetric information, sometimes uh, they had noisy information. So, and in all of these cases we saw how what the method is to find the optimal uh, policy or optimal strategy for uh, the team problem. Now what we will do is look at uh, a slightly different notion of optimality for team decision problems. As the, the kind of notion that we have looked for so far involves uh, what is what you can say is a global optimum or a team optimal solution. So, this is team optimal in the sense that it is the optimal one for the entire team uh, it, uh, where and it, pre, it presumes that the strategy has been chosen keeping the entire team's goal in mind. Another notion that comes up which is the one I will define today is what is called a person by person optimal. A person by person optimal is optimal for a person given that given a set of strategies for the other person or for the other players. So, a person by person optimal is a is a tuple of strategies such that it is optimal for each player to play his his strategy assuming that the others continue to play the strategies from that tuple. So, in other in other words this this is a strategy in which neither player uh, from the team would want to change if the others do not change. So, in some sense this is some kind of a local optimal solution and that is the that that kind of solution is called a person by person optimal solution. So, the notion we have looked at so far is called so far we have seen team optimal a team optimal solution. Now, what does this mean? So, suppose uh, you have a team problem, suppose there are n agents or n players and they, are to, they have to choose strategies gamma 1 to gamma n and the cost that they incur is j of gamma 1 to gamma n. This, uh, this is the setting of, uh, of a typical team problem. Now, now a team optimal solution, so gamma 1 star to gamma n star is team optimal if j of gamma 1 star to gamma n star is less than equal to j of gamma 1 to gamma n and this holds for all gamma 1 and gamma n up till gamma n. So, in other words j 1 gamma 1 star to gamma n star is a profile of strategies or profile of or a policy for the n players such that collectively they would not want to deviate from it. So, in other words no, the, no other combination of policies is better than this one. Okay, strictly better than this one. There may be combinations that are as good, but no other combination is strictly better than this one. So, this is this is uh, that is called a team optimal solution. So, another notion as I said is what is called person by person optimal. So, let me use a different color for this gamma 1 star to gamma n star is person by person optimal if j of gamma 1 star to gamma n star is less than equal to j of gamma 1 star dot 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 gamma i minus 1 star. So, 
notice what I am writing here, I have written the starred strategies for players 1 to i minus 1. Then for the player i, I will write a non starred one, I will just write a gamma i here. Then player i plus 1, I would again, I will again write a starred strategy and all the way till n player n again also the start strategy. So, these here are the remaining ones are starred and uh, this one here the, the ith one is without the star right. So, and the, the it is a person by person optimal uh, optimal strategy if this is if J1 uh, so gamma gamma 1 star to gamma n star is a person by person optimal strategy if if uh, if j of gamma 1 star to gamma n star is less than equal to this right hand side here for all gamma i. So, what does this mean? This means essentially that the uh, it is for all gamma i and for all players i. So, it means that for so j of gamma 1 star to gamma n star is per is uh, is person by person optimal if it has the following property that uh, keeping the others fixed at their starred values it uh, there pl uh, any player i would not want to deviate from his starred value uh, strategy that means there is no other better strategy for him there may be other strategies that are as good but there is no other strategy that is better for him than his starred than his starred strategy that means the cost keeping the others fixed at, at their starred uh, at the starred strategies it is optimal for this player to continue to play his starred strategy and this is true not just for play uh, for one particular player, it is actually true for all players. So, in other words you keep say suppose I take i equal to 1, then in that case uh, the strategies of players 2 to n are held fixed at their star values. The strategy of player 1 is, is allowed to change from gamma 1 star to any other one, he is allowed to explore all the other strategies and it turns out that gamma 1 star is optimal in the in spite of this and and and, the, and it's not just true for player 1 one can also do this for player 2 now for player 2 you keep you keep all the star you keep the star values the same for uh, for player 1 and player players 3 to player n and then allow player 2 to change its strategy from gamma 2 star to gamma 2 to some gamma 2 and then it turns out that gamma, any such deviation is uh, does not improve improve the cost and similarly for player 3 as well and floor as well and so on so uh, the 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 this point the the this this tuple of strategies gamma 1 star to gamma n star this policy is such that you, no unilateral deviation is from it is profitable so let me write this here so no unilateral deviation no unilateral deviation reduces the can reduce the cost unilateral deviation from gamma 1 star to gamma n star can improve the cost Now, what is uh, now uh, what is the relation between these two notions? We have defined one notion here which is the team optimal and another notion here which is the person by person optimal. What is the no relation between these two? So, one relation which is kind of very obvious to see is that every So, one notion one relation which is very obvious to see is that every team optimal solution must also be person by person optimal. So, every team optimal solution is also person by person optimal.
Now why is that uh, the case? Well, it is easy to see from this definition here itself. So, if you look at this, this particular definition here, it is fairly obvious. So, for example, for in order to show that uh, uh, gamma 1 star to gamma n star is which is team optimal is also person by person optimal. What one can do is you can uh, in, in this right hand side here in place of gamma 1 to gamma n what we can do is fix all the gammas uh, for players other than player i at their starred values and leave gamma i at as it is. So, then these then become simply this particular expression what you get here on the right hand side then is this particular expression right. So, you would get gamma 1 star gamma 1 becomes gamma 1 star gamma 2 becomes gamma 2 star etcetera and gamma i remains gamma i and all the others remain become star. So, therefore, the the cost under uh, then therefore, what we find is the cost under gamma 1 star to gamma n star is less than equal to this particular expression and consequently gamma 1 star to gamma n star uh, satisfies this inequality here right. And this is true you could do this not just for player i, but in fact for every every player. So, so as a result of this the uh, we, we can conclude that gamma 1 star to gamma n star is also person by person optimal if it is team optimal. So, this every team optimal solution is also a person by person optimal solution. Now, one can ask if the if there is any relation in the opposite direction and uh, remarkably there is in fact such a relation. So, let me write that down here. So, this is a neat theorem. Now, uh, the, the no Okay. So, the other thing to note here is that this, this, these notions of team optimal and person by person optimal are not limited to static team problems. Okay. So, this is these, un, uh, these notions are not limited to static teams. So, they apply also to uh, dyna, uh, dynamic teams and any other kind of team problems. Okay also applicable so these are also applicable to dynamic teams however uh, there if as if one wants a, diff, a relation in the opposite direction so if one wants a relation in which we can claim that maybe if a person if you have a person by person optimal then it's a solution then it's also team optimal then that sort of relation needs some assumption about the information structure so so that uh, that result is coming up next so we have this theorem consider a static team and let L of u 1 to u n comma psi be. So, the, uh, so this here is the cost function of the team. So, u 1 to u n are the actions of the n players let me write this in my earlier notation u 1 to u n these are the n players. Uh, actions of the n players. So, and psi is the environmental random uh, random variable. So, and L of u 1 to u n comma psi is is my uh, cost function. So, suppose let this be strictly strictly convex and continuously differentiable. in u 1 to u n. So, we want this this function L to be such that it is strictly convex and continuously differentiable in u 1 to u n. Okay. So, it should be strictly convex in u 1 to u n and also continuously differentiable in these variables u 1 to u n for each for each value of psi then in that case then 
every person by person uh, solution optimal solution person by person optimal solution of this team is also team optimal. So, in that so if you have this kind of a, a problem then every person by person optimal solution is also team optimal. Now, uh, this, this, this theorem is not that hard to prove, but I will not get into its proof though. Uh, but let me let us realize a few things about this uh, and notice a few things about this. See notice that because we are talking of we, we this theorem is asking us that L has to be uh, has to have two properties. It has to be continuously differentiable in the u1 to un and it has to be strictly convex in the u1 to un. It is not asking for any uh, uh, requirement from psi. So, it just you just need that this is strictly the strictly strict convexity and continuous differentiability has to hold in u1 to un for each value of psi that is all that is being asked right. Now what uh, what this actually presumes also is that when we are talking of strict convexity strict convexity or, or convexity for that matter is a notion that would that is applicable when u1 to un take continuous values. That means, they if, if you have u1 to un which is the action set of these which is the actions that the players can take if, if they are uh, a, they are a finite set if they are, the actions are being taken from a finite set then this sort of notion is not not even uh, applicable or not even defined because like in a in so if you take the example that we had considered earlier where there were two players player one could take actions up and down player player uh, one could take actions left and right those kind of uh, those kind of teams uh, would not satisfy this sort of thing. Here we would need therefore that L actually has takes values L should be taking values uh, let us say u i suppose we need u i here to be in some R m i. So, it has to be a real uh, a, a real vector okay not 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 just some discrete uh, not just a discrete uh, a vector that takes some discrete values then uh, it and and consequently so if i write m as the summation of mi and if i and suppose psi takes values in some r uh, rd suppose then l here is a vector from r m plus d is a function from r m plus d to r. So, this sort of a function is the one for which one can talk of strict convexity and also continuous differentiability. Is this continuous differentiability again makes sense only if u1 to un are actually uh, allowed to take values in, uh, in, a, in a continuous space it's like, like r m i right. So, this is something to note. So, this, this, this regime is not exactly the one that, uh, uh, that we used in our uh, in the example we have studied so far. A particular type of problem where this is where this property holds where these properties holds is actually a uh, one of our familiar friends it is what is called the linear quadratic Gaussian team ok. So, linear quadratic Gaussians are is a combination we have seen uh, multiple times before in this course and it is reappearing here now again in the in the avatar of a team. So, uh, what is a linear quadratic Gaussian team? So, let us go to a new page and write that. So, a linear quadratic Gaussian team. So, what this means this is often referred to as the LQG team ok. So, what is the linear quadratic Gaussian team? So, the in, in the linear quadratic Gaussian team you have the L having the following structure. So, L of u1 to un comma psi takes the form u transpose q u plus u transpose s psi. Now, uh, what is this? 
So, where u here is just a vector that is formed by stacking up the u 1 to u n, this is your vector u, q is a fixed and positive definite matrix, s is just some any any matrix and so this is the, the structure of the cost. The uh, in order to define the team I also uh, need to say what the structure of the information is. So, remember information in a static team was e y i equal to eta i of psi. So, here in this case uh, be, be in the case of a linear quadratic Gaussian team y i is just equal to h i psi where h i is uh, where h i is a full full row rank full row rank matrix all right so what one has to do then is as a player you uh, what you have to do in as an agent in the team you have to choose u i equal to gamma i of y i so, this is an example of a static linear quadratic Gaussian team. So, I should mention here this is static right. So, this in this in this sort of team uh, what you have therefore, if you look at L now, uh, now if you look at the hypothesis here we have assumed that Q is positive definite here. So, if you look at this function L as a function of u 1 to u n for each fixed psi for each fixed psi as a function of u 1 to u n this function is actually now convex. In fact, it is strictly convex because, because q is positive definite right. So, this sort of L has the property that so L is strictly convex in u for each fixed psi. So, for each fixed value of psi this L is strictly convex. So, as a result of uh, and moreover it is just a quadratic function L is also quadratic in, uh, in for each fixed psi it is also quadratic in u. So, consequently it is also continuously differentiable. So, it is strictly convex L is also continuously differentiable for all fixed psi. So, it is also continuously differentiable. So, consequently the previous theorem applies right. So, the previous uh, so the previous theorem then what does it say? previous theorem says that if you can find a person by person optimal solution of this uh, of this team problem then one you have effectively all you can effectively also find you have effectively also found a, a team optimal solution. So, every person by person optimal solution of this team problem is also person uh, is also team optimal. Now, in fact this 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 uh, little observation actually is extremely powerful because it helps us in, in uh, gives a very easy way of finding the uh, the the team optimal solution of this particular LQG uh, of the LQG team uh, static LQG team. Finding the team optimal solution of an LQG team otherwise would have been a much more tedious task whereas in this uh, with thanks to this uh, this uh, this correspondence between per person by person optimal and team optimal one can actually solve for it uh, rather easily. So, if, uh, in order to get an idea of how one uh, one can actually solve this you can observe that because y is uh, so notice that y i is some h i times psi and oh uh, I forgot to mention the the vector psi here is a because this is l q g this is I forgot to mention that this vector psi itself is some is a Gaussian vector all right. So, this is with some uh, mean 0 and let us say variance uh, a covariance matrix sigma. So, the because now the vector uh, when the vector uh, psi is uh, is Gaussian then 
what happens is then this is actually a, an uh, this now becomes an LQG team without when when the vector psi is not Gaussian it is just some linear quadratic team and even for such a team the previous previous result would still apply because you would still have that L is strictly convex uh, in u for each fixed psi and, and continuously differentiable in u for each fixed psi right. So, so the previous theorem continues to apply that every person by person optimal is also team optimal for but when psi is is Gaussian one can actually say a lot more. So, when psi is Gaussian in this case one can actually find the team optimal solution in a rather in a closed form. So, when psi, so when psi is Gaussian you can see what uh, if you think about just the person by person optimal solution what you would have there is you would be fixing fixing the uh, the these the actions of all the other players uh, players except for i and then solving for the optimal action optimal policy for player for player i so that that sort of logic actually suggests uh, uh, suggests a certain type of optimal policy and we, we will come to this particular logic in the next in the next lecture